notifications friends welcome back to my channel today's video i'm going to share with you my current entire fragrance collection of royal crown perfumes i love this house they are a luxury house they are ridiculously expensive and this is a house that i have told myself i'm going to own every single bottle because i love them so i figured i'd share my fragrances with you guys talk to you guys a little bit about them specifically the ones that i haven't reviewed yet and also rank them for you guys so if you'd like to know what i think then keep watching now, aside from one bottle i purchased every single one of these bottles and this is a very expensive house the bottles range from about 400 dollars to the more expensive one i think is around eight to nine hundred dollars so it is very pricey you can find a few of these bottles on so avant-garde and i do have a coupon code so if you want to save a few bucks on a few of these bottles definitely check it out i'll link all that information below but this video is in no way sponsored uh by so avant garde but i do know that you can get a few there and i know some people are always looking for discounts on these fragrances so i figured i would just let you guys know but um the free bottle that was sent to me was also not sent to me by so avant garde so just letting you guys know that but the reason why i wanted to talk about this house is because this is a house that i say within the last year has become one of my favorite houses and a house that I have just been like voraciously adding to my collection. Now, it might only be 10 bottles, but these are very expensive. And I try not to spend too, too, too much money when I'm adding uh, fragrances to my collection. I like to add a variety. So I've tended to every other month adding one to two bottles to my collection, but I do want to own all of them. They are very expensive, but they are a house that when it comes down to presentation, to quality of the juice and just how they're blended and how they smell, I feel like this is a house that might be expensive, but isn't overpriced. And so just because something is expensive doesn't mean that it's not worth that price point. And people can disagree with me and that's totally fine, but this is a house that I completely stand by the price point. I think that you are paying for uh, a very prestigious experience and they deliver um, across the board. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to again talk about the fragrances and I'm going to rank them for you. I have 10. So just because the ones that are on the lower end of the list doesn't mean that I don't love them, but the other ones as I talk about them and share them with you guys, uh, you'll kind of understand why I love those more. And if you're familiar with my channel and you watch any of these reviews, you probably already know like the top like three or four the first one we're going to talk about is Reflection. This is a very kind of citrusy, bright, but semi-dry floral fragrance. I really like this. There's a lot of really kind of beautiful uh, sparkly flowers in here, but it has a sweet dryness to it, which I find to be really, really nice. It's almost kind of broomy, and I like that. This definitely smells like sunshine in a bottle, and I really appreciate that, especially for hot weather. I think this is just really pretty and all around a very easy to wear scent, a very beautiful floral, a great daytime scent that still has a little bit of class to it. The reason why this is on the lower or the lowest end of my fragrances is because the other fragrances have a little bit more going for them. Out of all of the fragrances that I own, this one is the one that has a little less complexity to it, but it does have a beautiful kind of, again, that dry, sweet, honeyed, citrusy, uh, just beautiful sunshininess to it. This is a very energizing, uplifting, revitalizing scent. If you like bright, shiny fragrances that smell like sunshine, this is definitely it. But again, I love that hint of dryness. But as we talk about the other fragrances, they have more going for them. They tell more of a story and they feel a little bit more sophisticated, elegant, and luxurious. But at the end of the day, this is a really beautiful scent and I do enjoy wearing it. Number nine is Le Petit Coquin. This is a fruity floral gourmand. This is beautiful and light, just like Reflection is. It has that just that kind of beautiful, effervescent, sparkly, just kind of feeling to it. Energizing, revitalizing, and uplifting. Really, really nice. What I like is between the beautiful kind of brightness and florals, there are some really fantastic tropical fruits in here that just add like this delicious treat when you wear this fragrance. Like Reflection, this one isn't as intense or involved or complex as the other fragrances which is why it's on the lower end but when i want to wear more tropical fruity fragrances but i don't want it to smell too much like something you'd wear on vacation and just more like a light kind of 
theme with your fragrance. You know, sometimes you want to smell like mango and coconut and tiare flower, and sometimes you want a light kiss of fruits with your florals and your brightness. And that's what this fragrance is, and that's why I really like it. But the other ones have a little bit more going for it, which is why that's number nine. This next one could easily be higher on the list if I didn't viciously love the other ones that I own, and it's Tenebra. This is an ambery floral fragrance. It really focuses on a gorgeous, very green, very musky tuberose fragrance, but it has a soft, very elegant, powdery, uh, like sweetness, like with honey and powder. It's very classic and mature, but it doesn't feel very dated. It's a little bit sweet, slightly dry, and I just love the way the tuberose plays with everything else in this. It's really, really gorgeous. Now, the reason why this one is lower is because the other ones, again, are better. Like, like this isn't a bad fragrance, don't get me wrong. These three ones, excellent fragrances. But the reason why I love this house is because of the next seven I'm going to be talking to you guys about. But if you like very mature, very sophisticated, very elegant fragrances, but you want a little a little twinge of youthfulness, a little playfulness, a little flirtiness. Tenebra is excellent. Again, it has that beautiful kind of sweet, honeyed, powdery, uh, just like gorgeous nuances to this fragrance that kind of anchor it as a more mature, sophisticated scent. And the tuberose just gives it something a little extra. And I like that it's less of a sweet tuberose because I think with the rest of the sweetness in this fragrance, it could overrun the nice balance between powdery and ambery and floral. And so again, it's got a beautiful, sophisticated maturity and kind of like a flirty playfulness to it. And I really enjoy that. And I love this one too. I, I love all these, obviously. I want to own every fragrance from this house because the ones I own are fantastic. Number seven is Rose Muscat. Now, this is the one that opened the doorway for me to try this house, love this house, purchase this house, on this house. I spent a lot of money on this house. Got to me is this beautiful kind of juxtaposition between beautifully crafted, very elegant, uh, gorgeous rose that's slightly animalic and has like a little rebellious side to it, just a little bit. So Rose Muscat to me is a very wearable rose and it doesn't borderline on jammy or too sweet or too big or too bold. It's slightly musky and it's just so pretty. The rose in here is gorgeous, but it has a slight, and I mean ever so slight, animalic undertone to this fragrance, which just really makes the rose stand out and make this something extra special. And it was that little, like, kind of a breath of that animalic just feeling with this rose that really made me intrigued and wanted to experience more fragrances from this house and really start exploring this house because the more I wore this fragrance the more I liked it. It might not look like I've touched this bottle too much. I actually wear this a lot. One thing I will say with these fragrances is that I am an oversprayer, but I don't just overspray everything. I only overspray specific fragrances and I do love to overspray, but I don't overspray if it's something that will ruin the fragrance, if it'll make me like, like it will suffocate me or if the fragrance doesn't need it. Some citruses, you know, like light blue and clementine California and the fragrances like eccentric molecules, I could just like, take the cap off the bottle and dump it on top of my head and be perfectly happy. But this house actually works really well with like minimal amounts of sprays. So this might not look like I've touched the bottle too much, but I have. I only wear the two or three spritzes of this. What I like most about Rose Muscat is it has a beautiful balance between something really artistic, something slightly different, but still very wearable and approachable. And I love rose fragrances and very rarely do I smell something that's slightly different than something that I've smelled before. I'm not saying that Rose Muscat is in any way, shape or form a new composition. You've never smelled a rose like this before, but I like that it ha takes this kind of very beautiful, very literal translated rose scent. It has a sparkly citrus and this like animalic undertone to it. And it just is a little bit different than you would expect and just makes it really pleasant to wear and I really enjoy that. You um, and a comparison between this fragrance and Rose Muscat. And the reason why this one is higher than Rose Muscat is I really like the depth 
and kind of the more maturity that this particular fragrance has. I like the easy to wear, very easy to understand, just brightness that Rose Muscat has, but I really enjoy Alchemia. Alchemia is beautiful, a gorgeous, very sophisticated, very sexy, alluring, mysterious, decadent rose fragrance. It's gorgeous. It smells a little bit more jammy, but it also smells like a little bit tart. It's just really, really, really beautiful. And I like the little bit more um, kind of decadence and luscious, kind of almost like satin velvety rose, you know, like you have like a big, beautiful red rose and you just imagine what the petals feel like. That's how this smells. I just really love fragrances like that. And so this fragrance rates slightly higher than Rose Muscat, but they're both really beautiful. A gorgeous gourmand fragrance that really focuses on a beautiful, very luscious, kind of creamy vanilla fragrance and absolutely gorgeous, just flowers, specifically white flowers. It's very decadent. It's just very delicious. It's very feminine. Um, it's my scent of the day. It's really beautiful. And I love what this house does with vanilla. There's a few houses where I can just sit and say, that house knows how to use vanilla and I want more vanilla from them. Uh, house of Matriarch is one of them. What Christy does with vanilla is still my favorite. But what this house does with vanilla, I think is really special because it utilizes it in a variety of different ways. It doesn't just smell like this fragrance has vanilla in it. It smells like there was a thought put into how they were going to use vanilla and use vanilla's unique characteristics of being like sweet, sometimes like frosting, sometimes slightly animalic, like beanie, potty kind of vanillas, and using it in the correct amount with the correct ingredients, rather than just like, we're gonna throw some vanilla in this. It's a very specific, very thoughtful, very deliberate use of vanilla, and, and I love when they do it, and it's really beautiful in Isabella. Now, I love vanilla and white flowers. I love gourmands that really focus on florals and use the gourmand sweet elements to elevate these beautiful flowers. And a beautiful example of that would be Iris Ganache from Guerlain. And I think Isabella is another fantastic example of taking some very beautiful, very decadent, very lectonic, luscious, um, delicious, um, tasty kind of notes and using it to elevate a very just kind of gorgeous and bouquet of flowers. Number four is Powder de Fleur. Now the reason why this one is so high and Isabel isn't higher, even though Isabel could easily be high, I love the maturity of this fragrance. This fragrance smells like royalty. This smells like a king or queen. This is what I think somebody who just has a ridiculously sophisticated sense of how they like to smell. This is what they smell like. And money is no object. This is how I want to smell. And this is just beautiful. This has a very soft, beautiful, just kind of floral blanket, but it has this brightness and this just decadence to it. I know I'm using decadence a lot. It's, it's like my new word. It's not my new word. But a lot of these fragrances fall into the same category of classic, timeless, mature. You know, and so like a lot of the same descriptive words will be used, so that's why I'm kind of parroting it. But I will say that when it comes down to the fragrance that stands alone on its own, that smells slightly different, slightly more special, smells like it's just its own fragrance, not as cohesive as some of the others, but still has its own maturity, like on a completely different level, Powder de Fleur is definitely that scent. Now the other fragrances that I'm going to talk about definitely have a beautiful sophistication, a gorgeous ability to blend a variety of different notes together to create an absolutely fantastic wearing of perfume experience. But there's something about Pata de Fleur that just smells regal to me and I love that. I love the timeless classic. I think I mentioned it in the video, I don't know. If you like fragrances like Shalimar, Raja Enslaved, um, Chanel number no. five, you will appreciate this composition. It's slightly more powdery, it's slightly more musky, but at the same time, it's just so beautiful. It's just effortlessly beautiful. I love it. It's very mature, but it's also very alluring and sophisticated. Top three. Now, these ones are just gorgeous. So, number three, we have Sultan. This is 
one of the best, if not the best, cedar fragrance I've smelled. Beautiful. And this is the other, like Isabel, fantastic example of the unique and beautifully and deliberate use of vanilla. Vanilla in this just, it adds like, it's like burnt. It's like, again, like this kind of smells like something sweet and decadent and creamy from the vanilla, but then it's cedar wood, but it's like cedar wood with like charred edges. It's got that little bit of burnt quality to this, which just smells so gorgeous. This on the skin is spectacular. It's so alluring, it's so sexy, and it's just probably from what I've gathered, the most popular fragrance from the line. I can definitely smell why it's spectacular. And if you like woody aromatic fragrances and you like gourmands, this is a beautiful and near masterpiece blending of the two. Next is, I believe, the most expensive bottle currently that you can purchase from them. This is Absolute. It used to have different presentation, but when I purchased it, this is the updated presentation. So if you see it other places, it is like a slightly different cap and I think you would get a different box. I did reach out to the company and they did say, yes, this is authentic. And I always double check and make sure. But I will say something about this fragrance is that like Pate de Fleur, this one smells elevated, regal, but there's more of a playfulness to this fragrance. The florals in this, just smell beautiful and it's sweet. And it's just such a different experience than what you would expect. And what I like with Absolute is it's just, there's something about it that's so carefree, but it's still so ridiculously regal and beautiful. Playfulness, but still that regal quality to this scent. And that kind of juxtaposition between the two, I think creates a beautiful fragrance that I love wearing. This one knocked my socks off when I wore it the first time. And certainly not least, my most favorite is Oud Jasmine. Now, I've talked about this fragrance. And so if this is your first time tuning in, this fragrance literally smells like my dreams. And what I mean by that is, again, if this is your first time tuning in, I always talk about like my childhood and the two smells I really associate with my childhood. So I had a night blooming jasmine bush by my window when I would go to sleep and there would be a gardenia bush in the front yard. So I would go to sleep to the scent of night blooming jasmine and I would wake up to the scent of gardenia. So I think that's why I love white flowers so much. Also white flowers are really pretty, but oud jasmine smells like like a cold night, it's slightly damp. You can smell green leaves, you can smell breeze, and you can smell this really deep, perfect jasmine note. And that's what I mean, smelling like my dreams. Like I would go to sleep smelling this. It is so beautiful. And I have a very real connection to this fragrance just because it reminds me of happy memories when I was little, going to bed, feeling protected, feeling loved, feeling safe. I still have those feelings, but it's different as a child. You know, you're very carefree. It's very idealistic. And this smells like my idealistic childhood and I just love it. It's gorgeous. Now, if you do not like oud or if oud intimidates you, this is not a challenging oud. It's not a barnyard oud. It's not a fecal oud. It's not a skanky oud. It's just, Perfect. <laughs> anyway, guys, that is my Royal Crown fragrance collection. And these are the scents and they're ranked. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this video wasn't too long. I haven't reviewed every single one of these fragrances. I will be reviewing all of them. So again, like I said, if I have any reviews, I'll link them below. And if you want me to review any of these sooner rather than later, let me know in the comment section below. I'd also love to know what you guys think of this house, positive or negative. Have you tried these fragrances? Do you like them or do you think they're overpriced and overhyped? I'd love to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.